In this video segment, we're going to take you through the steps for performing a field lubrication of a nozzle. This is a spray lubrication procedure. Um, oftentimes we'll get asked, what is our prescribed schedule for uh, field lubrication of a nozzle? And, and quite simply, we don't have a prescribed schedule. Uh, we generally will recommend that lubricate it when it needs it. Uh, if after having done your visual inspection, you find all things are operating freely uh, and nothing's hanging up, then it doesn't need to be lubricated. Uh, if after having doing the inspection you find things are difficult to operate, uh, that's the time to perform a field lubrication of the nozzle. Uh, in all cases, we will recommend a product called Break Free CLP. Uh, this can be found at most stores that sell um, hunting and fishing type items. Uh, if you can't locate it locally, we have, of course do carry it here for sale. Uh, a couple of the things that you should not use for lubrication are items like WD-40, PB Blaster, or, or things that are designed to penetrate. Uh, they have penetrants in them that will, uh, over time, get into the O-rings, cause the O-rings to swell. Uh, and this, of course, will just make the problem worse. Um, a nozzle that was already difficult to operate now has swollen O-rings uh, becomes more difficult to, difficult to operate. So whenever possible, um, locate break-free CLP. We do have available um, through TFT a field lubrication kit. In the kit, you get a can of Break Free, two items which we call chopsticks or for help uh, moving the baffle of the nozzle. And then we also now include a small thumb drive that includes uh, this video as well as many other service videos. Um, written uh, the manuals for every product we make as well as any of the service procedures in a written format. Um, allowing you to download those, print those off, and have them on the workbench as you're performing the service. Uh, to start with, we're going to perform this field lubrication on a cutaway nozzle. Uh, this will help us reference some of the points that we're trying to get the lubrication to. In, in almost all cases, the lubrication points are the same, regardless if it's a 50 to 350 handline automatic nozzle, or if you're using a Metro fixed gallonage nozzle or G-force or a selectable gallonage nozzle even. Uh, many of the points are all the same. The first place we're going to start is at the front end where the shaper is. Um, we're looking for any of the places where something moves. If it moves against another piece, chances are it's sealed by an O-ring and we want to get lubricant to that, uh, that O-ring. So in this case, you're going to apply a small amount of lubrication around the inside diameter of the shaper and then just simply move it back and forth a few times. If you had a nozzle that was difficult to operate, you'll probably start to feel it uh, become more freely, more, more able to move. Once we've done that, the next thing we want to do is put it in a flush position. And these 50 to 350 handline nozzles that have this uh, silver button head screw, that's open in the center to the control unit. The next thing you want to do is put a generous squirt of that down into the center. That goes directly down into the control unit. Then using your check sticks, or your chopsticks, you want to get underneath the baffle and just work that up and down. That helps work the lubrication down into the control unit. A point on these, these are plastic and non-marring. You don't want to use something like a straight edge screwdriver or something that can damage the back side of the baffle or the barrel cone. A um, piece of plastic or a good piece of hardwood generally works well. While you still have a large gap in the front of the nozzle, go ahead and give a generous spray of it down along the center baffle shaft as well as around the outside diameter of the nozzle in that opening. What we're looking to do is as we let that run, on the outside diameter, we're hoping that some of this, as you will see, the lubrication will start to work its way down to the quadring that seals the front of the slide valve. So now we've lubricated the front of the slide valve. Move that back and forth a little bit to help work some of that lubrication in. Spraying against the shaft gets against the center shaft that holds the baffle into the control unit of the nozzle. So after having done that, again, work the baffle up and down a few times to help that lubrication work into spot. With the nozzle back in a straight stream pattern, put a few small squirts behind the shaper. That gets into the back side of the shaper and helps to lubricate the Torlon balls of the guide screws in the nozzle. And that pretty well takes care of the front end of the nozzle. 
Moving back, the bail handle, you'll want to put a couple small squirts on top of the, uh, the detent balls and springs, as well as just a little bit on the valve discs on the bottom of the nozzle where the bail handle attaches to the valve body. Again, work that back and forth a little bit just to help work that lubrication in. As you move along, wipe off some of the excess, uh, excess lubrication so that over time that's not a dirt attractant. Two other places we want to look at is we'll open this all the way up and we want to spray the back side of the slide valve. You can see on the back side of the slide valve there's another quad ring. We're working to get the lubrication down to that rear quad ring. And lastly, you can put a little bit around the back side of the coupling here where it meets the valve body. Generally do not expect this to spin terribly, terribly freely. This is sealed by an O-ring. It's a full-time swivel so that under pressure the nozzle can still swivel on the hose line. So this will, in most cases, not be a free swivel. So a little lub lubrication just helps that swivel a little easier when you've got it on a charged line. Again, wipe down any of the extra lubrication. As I said, many of the nozzles are similar in where we uh, lubricate. This is a control unit for an automatic nozzle that was built until 2004 before we switched to the newer control units. Uh, for the newer control units, there is no center screw to spray down. So you're just going to spray around the front baffle. In the case of a dual pressure nozzle, putting the nozzle in low pressure opens up two holes to the inside of the control unit. That will get lubrication down into that control unit. And again, with the same chopsticks, just work that up and down a little bit to work that lubrication in. The combination nozzles throughout the line are pretty well the same. You can see we have an inside diameter here to spray. This is a dual pressure nozzle, a fixed gallonage metro nozzle. Same thing, a little bit around the inside diameter. Many of the points in these cases are the same. If you have a nozzle such as the G-Force or one of our selectable gallonage nozzles, there will typically be a selector ring, again, that rotates. Anything that rotates is a good candidate for spray lubrication. A little across the front, as well as on the back side. And then just operate that back and forth. Again, wiping off the excess. After performing any service work on your nozzles, it's always recommended that a flow test be performed. You can look to NFPA 1962, the 2013 edition, or the appropriate manual for your TFT nozzle for testing procedures. If normal operation of the nozzle has not been restored by field lubrication, then it should be removed from our service and repaired. You can send the nozzles to our repair facility where repairs generally will take less than 24 hours. If you need further assistance in testing procedures or field lubrication, feel free to contact us at 800-348-2686 and ask for the technical service group or find the information online at tft.com.